In the news this week, the sharp rise in girls questioning their biological sex prompts a government inquiry. Radical new divorce plans are outlined by the Justice Secretary. And a BBC investigation raises concerns over sex-selective abortion. Hello. The government is to investigate a 4,400% rise in the number of referrals for girls who say they were born in the wrong body over the last nine years. Equalities Minister Penny Mordaunt ordered the inquiry which will see officials look into potential causes such as the influence of social media and the promotion of transgender issues in schools. A source from the Government Equalities Office said little was known about the increase or what the long-term impacts might be. Last year, the NHS received referrals for 45 children who were aged 6 or under. 800 children, some as young as 10, were given drugs to halt puberty and some started hormone treatments to begin changing sex. The government has launched a consultation on removing the requirement to give a reason for wanting a divorce. Justice Secretary David Gork confirmed the proposals to introduce so-called no-fault divorce. Speaking to the BBC, Roxanne Reiser, from a barrister's chambers specialising in divorce law, challenged the rationale behind the government's actions. Essentially, the law would be undermining marriage in such a way that becoming married would, would essentially be like renting a flat, you know? You, you're signing for a lifetime of a breakout close after a year upon giving six months' notice and, uh, you know, the penalty clause for breaking out early is, of course, legal fees, splitting of the assets, probably losing half of my pension, traumatised children who are going to have commitment and trust issues for the rest of their lives, and probably a lot of counselling thereafter. The Coalition for Marriage also gave its response to the move. The Coalition for Marriage was very disappointed by the document set released by the government around the consultation. That's not just the consultation itself, um, but I'm particularly thinking of the impact assessment where the government tried to project what sort of impact these changes will have on the population as a whole. Uh, and I'm afraid this impact assessment is a very flawed document. It doesn't consider the benefits of the current system. Um, in its impact analysis and, and the benefits of staying put. It doesn't analyse any alternative models other than no-fault divorce, which it, it backs wholeheartedly. And it doesn't include any proposals to help people try and save their marriages, like counselling. So it's a very disappointing document, and I'm afraid this looks like bad policy making and potentially quite a bad law coming down the path. British women are contemplating sex-selective abortion, a BBC investigation has found. The probe has led to calls for restrictions on non-invasive prenatal tests which can be used to reveal a baby's sex. Critics have already voiced fears NIPTs will lead to more abortions of babies with Down syndrome. So this forum here shows just how common this attitude actually is. It gets more than 10,000 posts each year from British women. So this woman is posted, I was wondering if there's someone on this board who had terminated due to gender. She then goes on later to say, I need a son to heal me. My only bet is NIPT followed by continuation only if it's a boy. This woman is saying that she is considering a termination and just cannot bear the thought of another girl. One of the threads is even called extreme gender disappointment. And it says this area is for people who are considering abortion or other methods that are considered very extreme. Rani Bilku of the Stop Gendercide campaign called for the government to totally ban sex-selective abortion. In 2015, politicians rejected such an attempt by pro-life MP Fiona Bruce after pressure from Labour. And finally, a humanist says he has been hounded out of a student leadership role for his views on transsexualism. Angelos Sophocleos was accused of transphobia after posting on Twitter that he does not believe men can become women. He stepped down as the president-elect of Humanist UK's student section following the backlash. In his resignation post, Sophocleus wrote that for an organisation which claims to be tolerant, it is concerning when there are certain no-go zones. Well, that's all for this week. We're taking a break next Friday, but we look forward to bringing you more CI News in October. 
In the meantime, for regular updates plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.